Welcome back, folks. Lighthead Online Video Show, hosted by the Get a Grip on Lighting Podcast. This episode of the show is brought to you by Keystone Technologies. Go to K-E-Y-S-T-O-N-E-T-E-C-H.com, baby. KeystoneTech.com. You know, I love my some direct drive Keystone LED tubes. How about you, Greggy? They're always great. I think it eliminates one issue a lot of people have is with ballast and things. It takes out one part of the equation. Makes it easy. It's like a screw and light bulb. All you need is a light bulb, and the fixture's working. Yeah, you know what? There's, you know what? There's such a great, uh, you know, just getting rid of that ballast is such a great thing to do. If it's, you know, especially if it's 120 volt to 277, you get rid of the ballast. And for me, it's like, well, LEDs are never going to burn out. Uh, hmm, sorry, son, it doesn't work that way. Go to KeystoneTech.com. That's K-E-Y-S-T-O-N-E-T-E-C-H.com, baby. Fifty thousand hours life. Direct drive, combo drive, they got them all. KeystoneTech.com. Greg, what are we talking about today on the Lighthead Online Video Show? Well, one topic that comes up a lot are, and where a lot of the LED product, or really all the LED product is made now, is in China. And how do we deal and battle with Chinese imports in our business? Hmm. We're lighting distributors, as we've stated many times on the show, and there is some pressure. You know, I know different markets have different degrees of pressure. Yours a lot more than ours in terms of uh, imports coming in and how to compete with that. When our end user sees it as a product, physically looks the same, um, and, but the pricing is a lot lower. So, so yeah, I mean, so uh, Toronto has uh, 500,000 um, uh, Chinese immigrants. Uh, so that's a lot. And there's probably a, there's probably a lot of more here than that, actually, that are on different kinds of visas and stuff. So there's a lot of Chinese people in Toronto and they're very good business people. Um, and a lot of them run lighting businesses. So within a 15 minute walk of my shop, I think I drove you around a couple of times and showed you all the places. There's something like 16 or 17, um, lighting stores that are owned by, uh, immigrants from mainland China. And they are all directly importing the stuff, uh, putting it on their shelves. Uh, there, a lot of the stuff is DLC approved. It's, um, been through whatever testing and all, and there's a lot of pressure on so their margins uh, can be significantly lower. They're importing fixtures. They're importing flat panels. They're importing LED tubes. They're, they're bringing in all sorts of different things. And uh, it, for me, it's become the business of selling LED replacement light bulbs uh, or even retrofit projects has become really a price issue. So it comes down to who has the lowest price. And I know a lot of people will say, well, you got to start with the top and work your way down from the pyramid and all that sort of thing. But when there's so much pressure and the consumer has no major brands to look to anymore, uh, it gets very, very difficult. Like the average person out there that's a property manager or whatever doesn't know uh, the, the people that are major players and we have to inform them. So... I think it's causing disrupting the business heavily, and I'm not sure what we can do about it, Greg. It's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, well, I think you said that there are no major players. I think I think there are still, and I think that it depends on the customer you deal with. That it's important to kind of see that that backing of a company that is based here or has a presence here, has a history. I, I think that still matters. Like if I was looking at it from the other side, and I was a facility manager purchasing the lighting, sure, low price is great but it's a light bulb or it's a light fixture. I need that thing to work. And if I don't, if that doesn't work, you know, my business will be directly affected by that. It's not a component that's necessarily always hidden in the background. It's something that you need. And I think, I think there is some argument that, you know, a Chinese import not having a backing or not having a, a brand name associated with it isn't as, um, I wouldn't be as accepting towards that if I was making the purchase on my end. Yeah. You know, so we, what, I remember years ago when I started in this business, I, I had a, a, a customer said, no one ever got fired for buying GE. Yeah. You know, that's what he said, exact, those exact words. And, you know, that was a powerful, it's like, oh, okay, you know, I need to be a distributor of one of these three, Sylvania, Phillips, or GE, or otherwise I'm not going to get these big accounts. And I think you and I talked a lot about that because for a long time, your company and mine, we really were um, outside that big three. And we knew that some of those larger properties really wanted to have that name brand and be involved with a big brand. So I think there's a percentage of people out there that want to be associated with that when they make their purchase. Um, what percentage is it of the volume? And then what percentage of the customers is it? 
the customers I'm dealing with, like for example, a multi-residential high-rise condominium um, or an apartment building, uh, I would say that the managers in those cases, they don't care. I think it depends on the, on the type of building you're going into. But uh, I think to me, the larger per percentage doesn't care about what brand it is. But I do think they care some about of the bigger the, the, deals do. The yeah, bigger the deal, yeah. the more likely they are to care. Okay, the individual yep. spot. But I would say the more than 50, 60% of the customers don't care about the brand that much. But if you presented them with one that had a backing in, in the country you're in or the, you know, North America, in our case, you're Canada, I'm US. But if you presented them with that versus a Chinese import that had some random name that you might not even be able to pronounce, and you show it side by side and you say you can save 50 cents here, you think they're going to opt for that 50 it, cent savings well, In my often? market, it, it doesn't come down to 50 cents. It's usually like 40 or 50% more. Okay, we'll go with it, percentage then. Right. So for example, it, like they could have a, an LED tube for, um, I'm not going to say prices because people get mad at us when we say prices, but let's say product X is $10 from the, the, uh, the uh, direct importer. And the major brand that's not even that well known to the public is sixteen dollars. That's a difficult sale, man. Yeah, that's difficult, right? And so you know when people they come to us and we need partners and all this sort of stuff, it's I have a hard time going around telling people to pay fifty to sixty percent more. That's hard. Unless and, there's a definable benefit to it. And the definable benefit is that we have the LEDs that don't fail. Well. Guess what? Nobody's ever come into my shop saying, I have the LEDs that burn out all the time. They're really cheap, but they, <laughs> they burn out right away. I've never had any vendor come into my office and say, hey, call again. You know what? I got the bulbs that are crap. I'm the one that makes the crappy LEDs. I'm the one that doesn't stand behind my warranty. You all have people come in here. Oh, we're this new brand and you know, don't use them. We're better. And what the hell do you know? I've been to China twice. You know, I've, I know what these factories look like. You know, too. You were there with me, man. I was, so, yeah, I a few of them. Yeah, I mean, and uh, I saw the different brands rolling down one line and the other brand rolling down the other line. So I think consumers have a feel for that in a way. You know, they know that there isn't a factory for manufacturer X in Ohio that's cranking these things out and they really care about their name on their product. I'm not sure that, you know, there, I know there are people that do. You know, there are people that do, but the consumers don't know the difference. And that's that's a, the problem I face. Right. And that's on us to educate them to some degree, because there is some performance characteristics with any lighting, lumens per watt, you know, total lumens, uh, color rendering, the actual Kelvin temperature, the, the t color binning of the color temperature, you know, how accurate is that color temperature that it says it is. There's a, a few characteristics like that that I think can be defined and can be looked at. And a lot of times with the imports, you, you don't get all of the information and you don't always know about it until you do it. How many times so have you I, said binning to a customer? <laughs> not often. Yeah. But right. I don't, I, but if, if you have to pull it out, it's an option because that, that can be something that, you know, people do get upset about different colors and they might have two different light sources in the space, but they're different colors, even though they're rated the same. Like, let's take the sponsor of this show, like Keystone Technologies. I yeah. know those guys. I know they care about their brand. I know they back up their warranty. I know that um, that they're great. Uh, but they don't have a major branding in the market, which is why they've associated with us, which is a good move. But they don't have that Philips G Sylvania cachet that we used to be able to charge more for. And now we But can't. they have a history. They have a history yes, and they have sure. backing here. And, and that's where it, it makes a difference to me, at least. And I think in turn to our customers. Now, have you ever done any imports direct from China yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, you know, when we were over there, I don't know if you remember the factory that I went into. I really liked the guy. We had a good talk and uh, he ended up giving me a really good price on a, on a, is it a type B you call it? Bypass? Is it yeah, type bypass, B? Yeah. Type B. Yep. I still haven't been able to get that in my head. So B for bypass. <laughs> yeah. So we, I was selling a lot of 5,000 K type B bypass the ballast LED tubes. Uh, I don't know, early in the LED game, say, I don't know, 2014, maybe 2000, doesn't seem that long ago, but it was in this, in this, in this world, it's a long time ago. And I brought in, I don't know, 30,000 of them and I had to pay cash up front and they said it was going to take six weeks to get here. Well, it didn't take six weeks. It took like nine weeks mm -hmm. and I, I got them in and took up a lot of room in my warehouse 
And then I was, um, you know, selling them great, doing rebate applications, giving people a good price on the street and everything else. And then what happened was um, the local utility, uh, the Save on Energy program, it's called in Ontario, decided that they weren't going to approve type B bypass LED tubes in their rebate program anymore. <laughs> and so that affects I, sales, huh? Yeah, I didn't think just, a little, sales. just a little bit, eh? So I was okay. stuck. I think I probably had like 10,000 or 11,000. You're talking like seven, 10, 12 skids or something. And I actually had yeah. put some of them in storage. So then I was paying a skid fee to store them every month. And then while this was going on, I'm getting flyers where the price of bypass tubes starts to drop because everyone's sitting on a whole pile of stock in Ontario of these things and they all want to get them out the door. Yep. So yeah, it didn't end up working out as well as I thought. I picked the wrong product. Had I picked uh, type A, um, is type A ballast and driver or driver and Yeah, tube? ballast compatible. Yeah. Okay, what's what's ballast compatible C. type A? Okay, yeah, type C A, so if I had bought type A, it would have been fine. Um, but these are the kind of bombs in the industry sometimes we get with all these regulating bodies. Like, for example, if something rolls off the E-Star list, say. Yeah. I don't know if E-Star is still around anymore, but, you know, that was the regulating body. And then, oh, no, that product's no longer on the list. But it says E-Star on the box. Yeah, but it's not on the list. Or DLC or uh, rebate programs make change. Like, lighting is very complicated, dude. And uh, from a regulatory compliance uh, standard uh, thing. We've talked about it a lot on our other show. Um, so yeah, I got myself into some hot water, but I ended up doing okay. I made money on it, but I wouldn't do you, it You again. did fine. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's exactly the point, I think, is you wouldn't do it again. I did it too, to some degree, and a lot lesser scale. Tried it once and just like something key, I didn't have a great Keystone's way better at that than me. <laughs> like yeah, Absolutely. Way that's better. That's their job. Yes. Yeah. Like their yeah. keystones way better at doing that than we are. And I just, I'd rather, you know, divide the cake up with them a little bit and, and, you know, negotiate with them and, or, or, or suppliers like that. And, and then not worry about the warranty, not worry about the, you know, cause I can get screwed pretty quick, you know, mm -hmm. sending over us dollars to Hong Kong and then waiting for crates of lamps to work their way across the Pacific ocean. You know, I, I, uh, yeah. I don't know any, uh, yeah. what about, what about these us made led tubes? Are we going to get any of those soon or what? Uh, they're out there. They're available. I mean, the, the the pricing is at a point where it it doesn't really make a lot of sense to do on on our end or on my end. Um, and but because there's really no enhancement in performance that I've seen. I haven't probably maybe dove into them enough, but I haven't seen anything that makes it a good selling point. Um, I I still want to factor in the manufacturer of the product. Make sure they have some backing that I can always get a hold of somebody if there is an issue. I can always get product in the future. I want to know that, you know. So if price import, matters you know, a lot, though. Price does matter for sure. You've got to factor in price, yeah. but I, I think you also have to fact it, factor in the backing and, and total cost of ownership in a way. You know, you, you you might save a couple bucks up front by importing it from China, but then two years down the line, you're going to have some issues. If you're a business that's here for the long run, like we are, you have to be able to trust who you're getting your product from, and I, I just don't see it in importing product direct from China. I think that's a really bad idea. For, yeah. I, I think it changes your focus away from your core business. Um, I think it gets you into quantities of lamps that you don't need and, and bogs down your warehouse. And then it focuses you on wanting to move one particular product over other products and changes how what we do best, which is recommending what the customer should buy as opposed yep. to um, worrying about, hey, get these 50K type B tubes the hell out of my warehouse now. I don't care exactly. what, you know. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to be stuck holding the hot potato. There's people that are smarter than me that are better at that and or smarter than me at that or whatever. You know what I mean? And, yep. um, you know, I was hoping that, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to stick to helping the end user clients, which is what I think distributors do best. I agree. Thanks for listening to the Light Ted online video show sponsored by Keystone Technologies. Go to K-E-Y-S-T-O-N-E-T-E-C-H dot com.